Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like it o'clock. Oh, I'm Pearl of Wisdom. People said I should do the Perlo dance when I start. There you go. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom. Yes, this is the Perlo dance. See, everybody's doing it. Everybody in the land. Look at uh, CL and uh, Hockey News Reports doing the Perlo dance there. That's nice. You're getting good. You see, they've been, see, Hockey News Reports and uh, CL, uh, they have been going to uh, Perlo's house of spanking. In the back, we have uh, Perlo dance uh, uh, tutorials. Yeah, people go there and they uh, do the Perlo dance. We t I teach them how to do the Perlo dance. You can do it all kinds of styles, you know. You can do the country style. You can do the uh, hip hop hip hop perlo dance it's a little different isn't it yeah okay uh so for those of you who don't know what i suppose i should tell you why i'm here we do nhl picks here this is the perlo wisdom show b pow picks edition edition you all you you what you need to do is comment down at the bottom goat just say goat and i will give you a free month of bpal i'll give you the link you can go to it you grab the 25 dollars package now you're going to find out as you watch this video why you want to do that because it's uh, it's full of frolic and it's fun and uh i we get a lot of picks right so Ulysses also, I saw you doing it too. I know you you are the shy one. You usually don't do it, but I saw you doing the Perlo dance there. Anywho, we're going to go into yesterday's games and then we're going to do tonight's games. We're going to do them real quick because my video has actually been going a little long. We got lots of picks to get to, so we're going to start right now. Here we go. Okay, yesterday's picks. We will go to the scores. Scores. We'll go over what we did. The reason why we're doing this is so you guys can see how good we do. Uh, it was, uh, we're, we're about, we're, it was pretty much a wash. Pretty much broke even yesterday. Okay, hello, come on. Does it really have to, okay, okay. Okay, Hurricanes Lightning. Now, I said that the Hurricanes were gonna give everything they had this game. They were gonna be tired. I liked Nedeljkovic. I really was thought McElhaney was going to be in. And I took the Canes to win. Um, I do believe we went with the under on this, though, though. So we got the under. So it's kind of a wash. The under paid 191 We put a unit on it, small pearls. So we're down a little bit. Same as here. I didn't know much about this game. I really wouldn't have put bet on it. I was more on the under than anything. So we got the under on that. But I did pick the Panthers because I just couldn't figure out if Panthers were going to be tired enough to lose to the Stars. The Stars have been very inconsistent, blah, blah, blah. Here's one. We took the Flyers uh, to win ML on this one. I did take the under, though, so it's a bit of a wash. It was for small pearls. Uh, I'll, um, just... Again, the Flyers were out a lot of players. I really thought that they had still had a better roster than the Rangers, who were also out Panarin and stuff. So I was correct. No doubt about that. We took Maple Leafs ML. Uh, I, did, I, I leaned in over on this, but I, I wasn't sure at all because the Leafs were tired. Um, but the reason why is they had... When does Riddich become a goaltender all of a sudden? He stopped like crazy amounts of shots in this game like 38 shots uh but the maple leafs did finally pull it out in overtime so really really tired they get two days off now to get some rest mr matthews go get yourself a nice mustache waxing and everything else you do i know you're listening because why wouldn't why wouldn't austin matthews be listening to this fine programming right right well in this one thankfully the over saved us. I had the Avalanche, and I thought the Avalanche were going to crush in this game. I'll tell you what. I watched this game. The Avalanche outplayed the Wild. Quite simply, K 
Kakanoff was better than uh, than uh, Grubauer by a lot. Goaltending is really always going to be the thing we're wondering about with the Avalanche, and they sir, they we sure were. They really needed to be the Wild here. The Wild were tired. The Avalanche had good legs. Uh, really got to watch for what the Avalanche do at the trade deadline for goaltending here. But we did have over, and we both had, had them both on large pearls. So it was pretty much a wash. Coyotes, again, we had the under here, and we had the Coyotes ML. Uh, so, again, it was sort of a, sort of a, it wasn't a wash because the Coyotes was 175. So we lost a quarter of a pearl on this one. Uh, I really thought, I mean, I got to rethink here. Oh, that's what I wanted to check. Aiden, that's what screwed me up. In the last second, they put Aiden Hill in. I would not have gone the under if I would have known Aiden Hill was in. They are doing that a lot this year. Really doing that a lot. Uh, putting uh, goaltenders in at the last second. Now, I want to remind you here, I don't personally put money on these games because it messes up my picks really bad. Um, I find that if I put no money, that's why I started the Patreon where you can go support me for five, 20 or 25 bucks. If you're enjoying these free picks and you got a little extra scratch and you want to help out, that's great. Also, it's fun over there. We do a Patreon challenge, which we do here as well. You put a Patreon challenge, a parlay challenge, a parlay challenge, which we do here as well. You put a parlay down in the bottom in the comment section. If you get it right, and whoever has the most points, I give you a free premium package of my Patreon, our, our Patreon. It's BPOW Picks. We got uh, Professor Joe Boric. Uh, he's not really putting too many picks in right now. He mostly does baseball and football, so he's kind of chilling. But uh, Professor Joe Boric is the B. I'm the pal. If you don't know who Projo is, Professor Joe, I don't know how anybody in this land would not know who Projo is, but go over to uh, Sports Fanatics, Fanatic News with a PH, Sports Fanatic News. He has a channel there. He's also on SteelFlyers.com, all sports network, which we have a big community of people there. Uh, I'll tell you more about it as we do these videos. It's awesome, awesome. Kings versus Blues. Uh, I had the Kings to win. I had small pearls on the over, but very small. Large pearls on the Kings. They paid 270, so we any little bit we might have lost here, we made up with the Kings play. The Kings play. Uh, so, like I said, it was pretty much a wash. Those aren't bad. Most of my days are washes, to tell you the honest truth. And then I hit big. But very seldom do I go do I lose significantly. So over time, if you do the picks I do, you make a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit there. If you do my large pick plays, you're probably going to end up being quite a bit over for a season. Uh, usually I'm hitting them pretty darn good. Uh, so you come over to Patreon and you can work. I give you an analysis of every game every day, pretty much, unless I really don't like the game, I may just fade it. I give you an analysis of every game and a pick for the line and a pick for the under over under and a either a large pearl play medium or small and you can decide what you want you probably got other great coppers there's other great coppers out there one i would suggest if you want like uh, baseball and stuff is ricketts picks r-i-c-k-e-t-t-s named after his cat it's one of the finest ball cappers i have ever seen amazing i'd highly recommend you go check them out okay so now let's get to tomorrow's picks uh here we go uh chicago versus columbus i'm on the fence about this uh chicago just beat columbus they went way over last game corpus Allo and lankanen is projected i have a feeling they're going to go with suban here Lankinen kind of got his ass handed to him last time, although they still pulled it out. If Subban is in, I just don't have enough faith in Corpusala right now. 
Uh, Columbus may reach and go for somebody else who's playing so poorly. I'm probably going to take Chicago on the ML again, even though it's on the weekend. Uh, Columbus is looking better, but they're not. I don't know what they are anymore. It used to be Columbus was the change up the whole uh, energy of the game, the flow of the game, and you know, win low scoring games. Now all of a sudden it seems like Tortorella's got Lion A Lion A is going all willy nilly and they're gonna start playing an offensive style game. Possibly because they know they have to outscore the opposition with Corpusalo and that. But anyways, this is pretty much I, I think this is I give Chicago an edge in this game. So I gotta take the two twenty juice rather than the one seventy five, right? I think Chicago wins 60 to 65% of the time here. Uh, as far as, uh, oh yes, there was some injury concerns though. That was a problem. But Columbus is still without Wierenski and Delzato. So their defense is still kind of hurt. They're getting Savard back, uh, which will help. Um, what was this? What was our... Uh, Injuries for Chicago. There was a specific injury that just happened for Chicago that made me wince. But I don't know if it's enough to change my mind on it. Uh, Dylan Strom. Yeah, he was already out. Lucas Carlson. I think they'll still survive it. They're just, they're, they're, they're a fighting team and they're playing with a lot of speed. Now the question is over or under here. Um, with Corpus Salo and Nett. You almost got to go over five and a half here. Again, over five and a half. Okay, okay. Okay, Dallas, Florida. Um, the thing about this game is, uh, uh, okay, I took Florida, as you know, the last game, expecting to take Dallas this game because Florida is playing a back-to-back -back on six games in four nights. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. They played here the game before. I'm not going to go back to it. Or, sorry, they had a day off. They played a game, had a day off, played against Dallas, had a day off. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Now, six games in four nights with a back-to-back -to, -back to boot. Now, Dallas is also playing a back-to-back, -back, but they've had way more rest. In fact, they were the worry about them was rust. Their legs should be moving back again. Uh, should we quickly go to make sure there weren't any injuries over that to change my mind? Uh, Radulov, does that look like he's going to come back again? No, he's not going to be back. Okay. And uh, Florida, Nudavara and Nolachari, not that big of a deal. I just think there's, I mean, I don't care how good of a team you are, and I really like Florida right now. If you're playing six games in four nights, you just very seldom can pull through those games. Bobrovsky is going to be a net, and I believe I saw Ottinger was, likely, was possible for Dallas. So I uh, normally wouldn't go on an over for Dallas, but with uh, Bobrovsky and Net, Florida being really tired means that Florida probably won't score much. Are they doing six here? Mm, wow. Wow, wow, wow. That seems like everything there. I, I don't know. I'm... They're both... Dallas is also playing three games in four nights, too. So they're going to be tired. Now, why do I worry about whether they're tired or not? When teams are tired, first of all, their legs aren't moving as much. Second of all, their passes aren't as crisp. Third of all, they uh, they don't have as much sting on their shots a lot of the time. So I'm going to go the under here. Under, one, under six. And I'm taking Dallas ML. Dallas ML should be paying some pretty sweet juice there. Yeah, 213, not too bad. 212, somewhere around there. Depends. Not all the lines have come out. So go searching for your best one right now. Bet online gives a go betonline.ag really gives nice usually gives nice juice to the uh, underdogs. 
Boston versus the Islanders. Boston has several defensemen hurt right now. Most of uh, the biggest one of which is Lauzon. Um, I just wanted to make sure here. Yeah, and the Islanders haven't played since Buffalo, that they beat Buffalo 3-2 two, two games ago. Boston is also well-rested. But again, they have a lot of injuries. I think I'm going to lean the Islanders at home here. I'm taking a lot of... Uh, I'm going to lean the Islanders at home here simply because Boston has some fairly significant injuries. Uh And uh, the Islanders are pretty healthy. It's a tough one, though, because Boston, Kevin Miller, Lauzon, Krejci, Zaboral, Grizzlick. I mean, that is a lot off your D-line. I don't care what kind of a team you are. That's a lot off your D-line. I was just showing you Capper's Companion. Uh, com or Capper's. Cap friendly. Capper's Companion. I'm thinking of Capper's Comparison. A really cool YouTuber you got to check out. He does like a lot of UFC stuff and he, he does a whole bunch of cappers that uh, he, he puts as a chalkboard and he tells you what all the cappers in the land are doing for each game and stuff. Pretty cool. He does it with his daughter who's like seven. It's a lot of fun. Uh, he's also a Patreon member. So uh, Boston Bruins, I think they're down. I think they've got right here. If you look at their lineup on their depth chart here. So you look at, they're going to be playing Charlie Coyle as a second line center because Krejci's out, not very healthy. Um, of course, that top line is there, so they can always kill you. But uh, Euro Vakanainen is a pretty young guy. He is playing well for a 22-year-old, but I mean, Connor Clifton, Brandon Carlo. I thought we just said Kevin Mar Miller was out, and then you got to put another new guy in there. I don't know what's going on there. Why? That would be maybe Stephen Comfer. Uh, that is not a healthy looking D line, my friend. So I'm going to go with the Islanders on that uh, to pull that out. Not to mention the Islanders have been playing like getting back to way their old way of playing. Now, the thing about this game is though, where the heck is my freaking over here, odds. The thing about this game, though, is the over-under is a 5. Islanders are getting 210. With all that on the D, I'm going to take that. Islanders, ML. And uh, with that damage to the defense, the over-under is 5 here. And that used to be the Islanders over-under all the time. And it was usually still pretty good. Uh but with Boston's problems there, uh, Varlamov and Rask, it's tough. It seems like the number. It seems like Islanders went like 3-2 here. It seems like right on. It seems like a push. Uh, I'm going to go the over. Just because Boston, maybe the, I think the Islanders could possibly get a few more goals than they normally do. Boston's got that top line. I'm going to go the over. Maybe it'll be like 4-2, an empty netter or something like that. That's about it. I probably fade the, the total, actually. But uh, we'll see. Tomorrow things change. Again, going over to Patreon, I'll give you the link down there. You, I, I update people on injuries and all of those sort of things on Patreon. I tell people when, they're hap when, when different goaltenders come out and then I'll change my bets a lot of the time. So what you got on here is not the final play, but I'm hoping I'm helping you out still at the same point time. Carolina, Tampa Bay. Now, I had Carolina this last game because they're playing four games and they were playing three games in four nights. Uh, we'll go to that real quick again. Uh, this is uh, NBC's, uh, or sorry, this is a uh, daily face-off schedule. It's the best there. I said it. Uh, I like this one. I use it all the time. Carolina. See, three games in four nights, but they played before that too. Like, crazy amount of games. A lot of teams are playing crazy amount of games because of COVID. They played, yeah. Why the heck did it do that? 
Yeah, they played four games last week. And four games in a week is a lot, by the way. For That doesn't normally happen in the NHL anywhere near as much as it's happening this year. And now they're playing four games now. So they're playing something like seven games in ten nights in this game. Tampa is also playing three games in four nights because they're playing a series with Carolina. But they were on Kobe before. They have had, they are far more rested. Uh, the Carolina played in Adelkovich last night, which is I thought they were going to pour everything into it and pull it out yeah, today. Today being uh, whenever you're watching this, you know, last night, whatever. Uh, but they didn't get it done. I still got to go to Tampa Bay now. They're not going to be any less tired, and they're going to have Reimer in. Now, Tampa Bay is going to put McElhaney in. Uh, I, you'd want to lean to the over here, except Carolina is going to be dead tired. If there's, I don't think Carolina is going to score more than two goals. So what's the total? Uh, maybe three. Maybe three. You might want to go on the uh, on uh, the team total for Tampa Bay here, whatever you're getting on that. I don't do those very often. I should look into those more. I have people ask me about those. Um, I got to get an, maybe an app that does it. I, I pretty much do it like this, but uh, okay, let's go six and a half. I'm going under six and a half. If we can find, oh, it's not all of them are six and a half. Go to bet online right now. If you can find six and a half, I'm going under. There you go. Tampa Bay, ML. Paying, uh, what, what are they paying? 171? Um, I, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm so confident. I'm almost thinking about going in rig to boost up the juice on that, to tell you the honest truth. Washington versus Pittsburgh. Uh, both of these guys, both of these teams have played pretty much the same amount of games. Uh, I want to know if Samsonov's back. If Samsonov's finally back, he may have rust. Pittsburgh won last game. Uh, I'll tell you, it was a back and forth game. I I just have a feeling that Washington's going to pull this out. It's kind of a gut play. Uh, let's make let's look at injuries. Uh, they they both played pretty much the same. Oh, yeah, Zucker's out. That's right. Zucker and Jared McCann, Demelin. Okay, I'm going to go Washington on that game. Uh, I just don't think Pittsburgh can't afford to lose any offense against a Washington team. So uh, I'm taking Washington and on the total, six and a half. Uh, I'm going to lean the under there. It, just because it's six and a half. It's a lot of games. Th teams are playing a lot of games right now. It's really going to be hard to hit over six and a half often. These teams can do it. I may just fade that, that total. Calgary versus Ottawa. Uh, is Calgary going back to Riddich? Is Again, Riddich is hot now. He may take the... He just like almost beat Toronto. And he did beat Toronto before that. I think they almost got to keep on rolling with them, except I think this is a back-to-back -back too, isn't it? Yeah, this is a back-to-back. -back. Uh, wow. That changes things. Um, three games at four nights, on the road, back-to-back, -back, playing against an Ottawa team that's on a high right now. Is Ottawa also playing three? Ottawa's, I'm going to take Ottawa. I'm going to take Ottawa ML here. Wow. I was leaning at Ottawa PL because you're getting the juice to do that where they're still getting 171, but I'm going back to Ottawa ML here. Calgary was not very convincing against Toronto in their win. Basically, they survived on Riddich. Is he going to keep it going? I don't know. Murray's been playing really well. Ottawa's going to beat the crap out of a team that's tired. So, yeah, I'm taking Ottawa. There's a good one for you. Uh, 
New Jersey versus Buffalo. This is tough because this would be the third loss in a row to Buffalo from New, by New Jersey. I really thought that Jersey should have won the last one easy. Buffalo was on a back-to-back. -back. I think they're both playing three games in four nights. There's so much of that right now in the NHL because of COVID. Look at that. Three games in four nights. Coming off the – played in New Jersey. This is sort of like a back-to-back, -back, except they had a day off. It's home and home, I guess you would say. Uh, man, I'm probably fading this game. They're both tired. I probably would go the under. The under is probably the play here. Uh, they're going to play Olmark. Olmark looked fantastic. I'll tell you what I, I said, that Buffalo's energy had changed when they lost to the Islanders. And they almost – they only lost to the Islanders by one game, goal – then they beat up New Jersey the next game. Um, let's go Buffalo again. Let's go by what I was saying. Uh, uh, New Jersey looks like they're tanking a little bit. Something's amiss. So let's let's keep rolling with Buffalo. One eighty. Oh, look at that. They're even getting. They're not even getting dog money here. Uh, One eighty eight on the ML, and we're gonna go the under because they're both tired. Uh, and uh, I don't know. Well. The only thing is, is oh, is Blackwood not going to be in net? I reserve that. I will definitely be taking Buffalo if Wedgwood is in net, and then I may be going the over because uh, Wedgwood's not a great goaltender, my friends. Okay, Detroit, Nashville. Uh, I got to go back to Nashville again. They're playing a lot better. Uh, they're playing with more confidence. It's tough, though. The one thing I do know about this, I'm just going to keep on flying with the under on these this series. Under, under, under. It did me well. So I'm going under for sure. No doubt about that. Slight lean to Detroit or to Nashville, I guess. Montreal, Winnipeg. Uh, this is Montreal just fired their coach. Usually a team plays really well after they fire their coach, but not always. And... Uh, I have a feeling that they're going to play looser for sure. Whether they're going, to, they're going to win the game or not, I don't know. But I have a feeling they're going to play looser. Because the almost always a coach comes in and says, let's just have fun, go out there and play. And, you know, maybe Julian was just being a little too serious and being too nitpicky or something like that. I get that I, kind of idea that they were doing that. Because the, the players are holding their sticks a little tight. And they were doing this last year. Uh, in fact, Julian teams now, the older he gets, seems to fall into that. Boston, before he left, did, was doing that. So I'm going to say, it, if you all look at this, you can get an over six here. You can find over six on sports interaction. You can find it right now. I'm going to have to put this in on Patreon. I like the over six on this game. Uh, Hellebuck has not been playing awesome. Price has not been playing great. I imagine Price will be in here. So, yeah, let's look at what they've been playing, if that, how much rest both of these teams have had. Whoa, Winnipeg. If anything, they might be rust. Three days off. What the heck happened there? And uh, Montreal, when do they get three days off? But they've had time to practice with Dubois, too, if they've had three days off. And Dubois has looked fantastic. Uh, tough game. Tough game. Montreal. And yeah, not too tired. I say the over, and I slightly lean to Winnipeg. I, I, I'm going to say Winnipeg at home. I, they've just looked so good. They've looked really good. As long as they can handle the onslaught of Montreal when the uh, when it starts, probably look at over first period here too. Uh, one of these teams might score two real quick. Montreal is going to come out like a bat out of hell. You can almost be assured of that. Uh, Edmonton versus Vancouver. Uh, Vancouver's in big trouble. Um, uh, they got up three one on some fluky goals the last game. Right now Smith is in there again. Uh, and I believe Demko will probably be going back to Demko here. Uh, this question is the over or under here. 
I, I don't know. I think Vancouver's spirit looks totally destroyed. I'm going to say Oilers, and I don't know if Vancouver's going to score enough. I'll go the under. But I'm going to say the Oilers. i got to keep on going with the Oilers right now. They're playing with a lot of belief and confidence. 176. Uh, tough to put it in reg on the road. And Vancouver won the last one, but I'd consider it. I mean it like Vancouver, Edmonton is flying right now. Uh, are they getting any of their defensemen back? Because they did have injuries on D. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, probably just stick with the ML. Cuckoo, Legison, and Bear are still out as far as we can tell. Don't really like that too much, but Vancouver's energy is so poor, I got to go with the Oilers. Okay, boys and girls, that's our full 42. Oh, look at this. We went 30 minutes again. Okay, I'm going to let you go. Picks tomorrow. Sorry I went so long, but you love it. You love it. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you. Okay, bye.